right, we are back. Mr. Jacobs, this segment <laughs> is new to the show. It's, it's basically what was the, our first comic book to kind of get us into comic books. I don't want to lead it off because I'm somewhat embarrassed of my comic, but <laughs> if you want, I will. My, uh, my mother used to work at, at Tecumseh Mall. She was a, a hairdresser, hairstylist, whatever. And uh, so my dad would drop me off there on Friday nights and I'd wait for her to finish work. And I went to, there was a store in there next to Sneaky Pete's, which now I'm even dating it even further. But, uh, and I bought a, a comic book called Alpha Flight. Oh, yeah. And I believe it was like issue Alpha three Flight. of Alpha Flight. And I just, that's it. I mean, that, yeah. that was it for me. And secretly, North Star is one of my favorite characters. Um, was this character named, named Puck. Yeah, who I remember was Puck. Was this uh, oh, yeah. sure. little guy, not very many superpowers whatsoever. Midget, they called him. He was a midget. Well, he wasn't really, but a little person, a little person. And uh, I don't want to offend uh, Sean there, our camera guy, but... Uh, <laughs> I was just amazed that I was always the little person, you know what I mean, at my school, and that this guy was like a, a superhero, you know what I mean? So. Basically, that's what uh, that's what got me into comic books, and that was my first comic. Uh, this is my first comic from my from memory. Uh, this is the actual copy, I believe, but it's Brave and the Bold with Batman and Superman. Okay, it's one of the last issues they did. But what I want to point out about this, and this is something that DC and Marvel editorial always complain about, is multiple Earths and time travel. Yeah. This is look at this, Batman and Superboy, and it says right here, this looks like a job for, and, and Batman and this criminal are like Superboy. So ba, ba. Yeah. Ba. <laughs> so, so when I read this as a kid, I remember thinking, well, why are they surprised that it's Superboy? Because I didn't know, I thought there were two different characters. I didn't know it was right. Superman as a kid. And when I read it, time travel, I don't care, whatever. It's all good, right? I wasn't confused <laughs> by it. And I wanted more. I want, I'm like, DC is the one, it's awesome. You know what I mean? And also, I want to point out Jim Aparo artwork. Uh, it is Jim Aparo. Yeah, That's why I grabbed it. Exactly. Like, Jim, Aparo? Jim Aparo to this day is still one of my favorite artists. So I can still really? read this today and be entertained by it. And this is, you know how we were talking earlier about whether or not the older stuff could hold up. This is 82-ish. Yeah. I, think they, I think they should sell these as reprints on the newsstands and I think they would still sell and kids would enjoy them. But this is what got me into comics. Uh, I got my first issue, I can't remember his name, it's Kevin Nolan or something like that. It was an inker, it was that Shocker cover remember we talked about the other day, Batman's getting zapped oh it, by, by the mine by the mine like, it's like 415 i Batman. bought it because of the cover it was a really beautiful Excellent. cover i believe jim apero did the artwork inside he did. which was he did. disappointing are you kidding me uh, <laughs> da, da, da. i bought it because of the cover I, I i didn't even really enjoy but it, it was the art it was the art that brought me really into it sure. and that's that like you know little lightning so two people brought in by batman no batman got me yeah. right away well, we were batman. Batman. He's He's awesome. yeah. batman i'm a millionaire and I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> like you. Dale. Uh, when Mike asked me this question, it was there's a whole bunch of titles that came into my head. Uh, Nova number one, because of the great cover. Of course. Uh, and who did the art? Do you remember? John Buscema, I think. Yeah, I think it was Buscema. Whoa. He yeah. did a lot of the stuff in the yeah. mid 70s when I was reading comics. Uh, I also thought about uh, Spectacular Spider Man number one. Again, great cover. I loved uh, Marvel comics when I was a kid. I hardly read them at all now, but that's what I loved when I was 10. And so there was all these Marvel books that I think, kept thinking about, it, and I got online and started looking at covers. Oh, yeah, I had that, and then that, and that. And, but the issues I really remember were Marvel Team Up 41 to 44 because it was Spider-Man and Scarlet Witch. They go back to the Salem Witch Trials, and they fight Cotton Mather. And so I got hooked to this several part story. It started, and now I realize, it was starting to teach me about history. It made me try Again, to go yeah, see, yeah. who's this Cotton Mather? Well, Cotton Mather's a historical person. Yeah. Didn't really have the superpowers they gave him, but you know, it was all, it was really interesting and it got me into some of this stuff. Absolutely. So. Do you still have the comics? I don't, George and I were trying yeah, to track we're, down, yeah, we're tracking uh, them down right now. Marvel Team. Up. I gotta, so, do I gotta, you have it? Do you have the comic? I already talked about my first book. Do you have it? Did you yes, keep I it? Yes, I still have it. You still own it. I have it. It's balled up in my pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we get a shot of this? I'm okay, so wait, nervous. Wait, wait. It's right like an here. upside down want... glass of water. I just really can't get to it. I just want to point out with a reference to history. Yeah. When I read Squadron Supreme and I found out that 
Nighthawk, secret identity Kyle Richmond was the president of the United States. I actually looked through my Encyclopedia Britannica to find out what his term was. <laughs> over and over, he must have been between Carter and Ford. But it was I that never George guy. Who was there? You know what? I'm going to wrap president. it up. All right. Thank you, everybody who came out once again. And Jen Hill is the Inedibles. Dr. Dale Jacobs. Dr. Dale Jacobs.